Hey everybody and welcome back to The Little Quilter. Today we're going to be starting a new journey with this quilt behind me. This is a quilt called Barn Stars by Shelly Cavana from Chorus Quilts. I actually purchased the quilt through Connecting Threads, one of their block of the month programs, and it was a period of nine months that they sent me each month a new block to work on. It took me longer than nine months to do the entire quilt just because I was distracted and doing other things at the time as well, but it is finally put together as you can see. I added some borders to my quilt that you'll see as we go through actually quilting this project, um, which were not actually part of the original sort of layout, but I wanted to add borders to mine. The finished quilt prior to me adding the borders is around 80 to 180 by 100 inches and so it's obviously bigger than that now so it is a pretty large quilt this will be my third quilt that I will be doing on my long arm machine so I'm definitely not perfect at long arming but I am getting better and I'm enjoying the process so I hope that you guys will enjoy watching me work on this quilt. If you are interested in purchasing this quilt pattern or any of the patterns from Shelly because her patterns are beautiful, I will link her website. I will also link Connecting Threads website down below so that you guys can check them out as well. But otherwise, let's get started by working on our first video with this quilt. Thanks guys. All right, so after I've found the center of my fabric and marked it with a pin, or you can crease it, I have actually done both, um, then you're gonna go and you're gonna find the center of your leader cloth. And I'm gonna do the back first. Now, I'm not gonna use this pin. I'm actually gonna use these pins. So I can link these pins below. Some people don't pin. Some people will use clips, some people do all sorts of things. Personally, I like to pin. Um, I just feel like I have better control over what I'm doing. And so I like these pearl ones, A, I think they're pretty, but I'm gonna start on either end here of pinning. And I like to pin on both ends, just lining the edge of the fabric up with the edge of the white leader cloth. Okay, now we're gonna start back from our center line, which is here, and we're gonna go that direction. And you always wanna mark from your center line out either way. And just a closer up picture. So this is my backing cloth, which is facing down onto the cloth, onto my leader cloth, because obviously when I quilt on top of it, I want this to show on the bottom of the back of the quilt. And I have this all pulled up and around. So as you can see here, it goes this way and I'm pulling it up and around the whole back. And it just gives me better ability to get to it without having to be stepping on my cloth, on my quilt back, on the leader cloth, fighting with it, those things. So we have finally done the back of the quilt to our to our backing 
and um, to our backing leader cloth. So we're gonna now go around to the front of the quilt and we're gonna attach it there. So let's get to that. Okay, now we are at the front of our quilt and I have put, as you can see, I have put the quilt bar on and I have our belly bar on, okay? Which is where the quilt backing goes. This is where the quilt top goes. Behind me, you can see that the backing cloth has fallen off the back and this is where we've pinned, okay? So what we're gonna do to make this easier for us is we're actually going to unroll this front bar and then we're going to pull it all the way around and wrap it around, similar to what we did on the back one. So I'm gonna go all the way down the quilt here and fold it over, over the quilt bar. And same down here. Again, I do like to work from the middle or center out, just to try and keep things nice and straight and flat. All right. So I'm gonna go here. Usually you can tell if you're lined up. So if you look right here, you have my quilt backing and then you have the underside of that which is lined up and then you actually also have the other line for the actual quilt top okay so we're lined up pretty good so again we're going to grab our quilt bottom our quilt bottom our quilt backing and we're going to mark the center line so taking our two free edges, running this all the way, taking that center piece and really marking it with our nail. All right, so now I've got our center marked. We're gonna come to this center part and we're gonna grab our box. So we've got our center park marked. And we've got this marked here. And we're going to attach it to the quilt. And then we can take this just to make it easy and drape the rest of our fabric over the quilt bar. Now we're gonna do exactly what we did on the back of the quilt. All right, and just like before, we're gonna now start from our center and we're going to quilt, not quilt, we're gonna pin in that direction, okay? So let's do that. Okay, now we have pinned across the entire one. So we're going to let this go ahead and fall on over all the way across. And as we go, we're just going to make sure we pick up any of uh, straight legs. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here. And we're actually going to wind this part up. So we're gonna wind our quilt backing. I'm not really worried about it being too clean or anything like that. I'm just trying to get this all 
up and off, and then we're gonna go back through and straighten everything out. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that we've got the quilt backing attached to our quilt, what I'm gonna do is roll this up nicely because it's actually gonna roll onto this bar here. And because I have ironed my quilt backing, but it's been a while and it's also a really large quilt. So getting all of the wrinkles out is a little bit difficult. So I'm actually gonna use this mister bottle to just, as I go, gradually mist it. That's gonna help any wrinkles kind of lay down. And as we pull it onto this, it's going to flatten it out, okay? So, and we're not doing a huge mist here, okay? We're just doing a little mist, all right? Nothing major here, all right? And so, we're gonna roll this up. And I want to try, and I'm actually going to take off the quilting bar while I do this. So it's nice to put it on whenever I'm first attaching this because it gives it something to hang on. But now that that part's done, I actually would like to be able to have better control of this the whole way through. So I'm just going through, I've reached the point to where I've got to this part where this is sitting over. So I can feel along here all of my pins. And so this is also why when we pin, we want to pin going away from the center because we're running our hands down this. So all I'm doing here is moving that pin and seam over so that this sits nicer and rolls nicer for me. All right, so when we're doing this, this is just to give you an idea. So we're trying to keep this edge nice and even so that we know as we unroll this as it goes up, it's gonna stay in that nice even, so. Okay, so we have got the quilt backing on all the way. You can see here along the back we have our pins where it is set um and they are you know if you look at i know it's hard to see the distance between the bar and the pins it's about the same all the way down so we did a pretty good job on our evenness of rolling it and that part looks good coming around here i'm just going to pull this little bit of backing it got a little stuck there. All right, perfect. Now, one other thing, well, there we go. All right, so one other thing I do is you have these little flaps at the end, and a lot of times I'll actually go through and pin those down so that they're not flapping around, kind of hold everything tight. Eventually you have to unpin that, right, or it can't continue to unroll. But for now, that's where we're at. As we were rolling, we, you know, worked hard to get my seams to be straight all along, so did pretty good there. So, now we are ready to work on our quilt top. So, let's get to that part. Okay, so now that we have got our quilt backing on all the way, we're going to go ahead and put our batting on top. Um, some people like to put their backing on and then do their quilt top and then slide the batting in between. I find that a bit annoying and worry that I'm gonna mess everything up and move things that I've worked really hard to keep nice and settled. So we're gonna do our batting on. I have my batting on a roll just under here. It is Quilters Deluxe Poly and it is a king size roll. So it's a really big roll. 
and I just unroll that. I keep it rolled up under the machine and pull it up and over onto the quilt. So. One thing that I do recommend having is one of these lint rollers. Um, as I pull this out, what I notice is there's a lot of lint and it's just because from sewing and quilting, there's lint everywhere and that batting really attaches to it. So having this ready to just go ahead and lint roll, that is what we're going to do before we pull it up and over so that we don't trap all of that lint into our quilt. Okay. Okay, so now we've got the batting on top of our quilting loom. Everything is nice and straight um, across the back here. So what I'm going to do now is work on getting the quilt top on here. One thing I haven't mentioned up to this point is I'm actually quilting this quilt. So it is over 80 by 100, but I'm quilting it 100 this way. So I'm actually loading the quilt sort of sideways rather than long ways, just because it will be less to roll up going 80 this way than if I went 100 this way, which is just gonna help with the bulk of the quilt. Um, should also help me to be able to do more of a larger pattern whenever in my bigger quilt blocks that I've got to be able to do more of those at a time than having to stop halfway between the block because I only have an 18 inch throat. And so as I get towards the end of that, quilt, this is, that throat space is going to decrease. So that's why I'm doing this quilt actually long ways rather than long ways this way. All right, so let's get the quilt up here and we'll start with that. So I've got the quilt up here. I am not going to, some people would start here and um, they don't use the bar. I like to use the bar. I think it helps my quilt to stay nice and square and in line where it needs to be, especially on a quilt like this. So it's really long, my backing fabric, I probably should have ordered several more inches of backing fabric on either side. So on this 100 inch width that I have going across, my side is not very long. So if my quilt starts to angle, I'm gonna be in trouble towards the end of the quilt. So that's why I'm not floating this quilt because I don't want it to float off in any direction that I don't want it to go in, okay? So now that I know we're good there, I'm going to find the center of it and I'm going to start attaching it. I'm actually going to throw it over the top here and that way it will have gravity to help me pull against as I tighten that quilt onto the belly bar. So just like before, we're going to pin down along this line, keeping our line nice and even with the leader bar. All 
All right, now we've got everything pinned down on the front and we're ready to start rolling this up. We're gonna keep the quilt top over the top of the back, backing bar just to help give us something to pull against so that we can keep this quilt really nice and straight. And also um, we'll do our water bottle spray to get some of the fine wrinkles out as we roll it up should be good. Okay, so let's get that going. Right, so we have got our quilt all ready to go. And we'll be ready to start our registration line and everything and start up the quilt the very next time. The next episode, I'm going to go over how I designed the quilt and we're going to start actually quilting and working on the project. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video and looking forward to quilting. See you next time.